Hey everyone, this is an ultralight five inch drone that I built and I wanna show you because this one is awesome. Uh, if you've been watching this channel, you know that I've been experimenting with ultralight five inch drones over the summer, trying to see if there's a formula out there that really brings something special to the table. Uh, this is now my fourth ultralight five inch drone and the other ones were interesting, uh, but this one is awesome. For the first time, I feel like this is really something that I wanna fly. It does not feel like an underpowered, a uh, flimsy five inch drone or anything like that. Uh, it's just kind of its own thing. It carves its way through the air and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna rip around these trees behind me over here. I'll show you that. And then afterwards, I'll tell you why I think this one turned out so well. All right, this thing is awesome. Uh, it's super fun. It feels really locked in. It's got that power like you would want from a five inch drone, but it's way quieter than a normal five inch. It's super agile and this thing sips current. If you look at the DVR, you should be able to see how much current, I don't know exactly offhand, but check that out. And I'm flying it on an X-T30 at the moment, if that tells you anything. I've got an adapter to X-T60 on the drone itself. Uh, so I intend to fly this on X-T60, but even on X-T30 is fine because it just needs so little current to begin with. And so that is pretty sweet. Now, this is not my first attempt at an ultralight five inch drone. If you've been watching my channel, you might remember when I did my first five inch experiment. Uh, it had a prototype frame. It had the 2204 motors. That was a pretty light five inch motor at the time, but the motor itself turned out to be uh, a little heavier and a little more power uh, than the frame could manage. The frame was kind of flimsy and also the props at that time. The lightest prop I could find back then was the HQ 3x3x3 and it's a fine prop, but the amount of torque on the arms, uh, it just wasn't working out. It wasn't a great build. And then more recently, I reviewed the ET5 bind and fly. This is the ET5 frame, but the bind and fly comes with 1506 motors. And those would be great motors on like a four inch or something, but I thought they were just too small for five inch. I had a hard time tuning that. There were just a lot of weird problems at low throttle. Uh, I could just tell that it was struggling to manage the prop on that build. And so I felt like it needed bigger motors. And then you might've seen my review of the X-Knight 5, 
uh, that actually came out, the Binding Fly, and that had 1805 motors. Those motors were way better. They definitely had more authority on the props. Um, I was liking how that was flying better, but that build had lots of other little problems, little things that needed to be fixed, problems with how it was assembled, and also the frame was still a little bit flimsy. I wanted something really tough that I could really bash around and have a lot of fun with. And so for this one, I specced out the components that I wanted for myself for flying, and I built this with all the latest stuff. This is, again, the ET5 frame uh, from RacerX FPV. I've got the 2004 Beta FPV motors, and they're 1700 kV, which is awesome on a 6S battery. The flight controller in here is also a brand new product that I'm trying out. Uh, I can't show that to you just yet, uh, but subscribe, you know, stay tuned, and you'll see that when it comes out. So yeah, I'm excited about this drone. I hope it continues to hold up as well as it has been so far. I'm going to have a lot of fun ripping around with this thing. If you want to see the parts list, I'll put that down in the video description, and thanks for watching. See you next time.